Hi there, friends. It's Missy Shipman with Missy's Glad Heart Studio. And I'm so happy to once again be a guest on the Baldwinsville Public Library New York Facebook page as we share our card making class. I miss seeing you in person and crafting together at the library community room. Um, but this has been a fun opportunity to share virtually over the last several months on the second Thursday of each month. And um, many thanks to the public library for sponsoring um, funds that allow us to have complimentary kits for 20 or more people each month. And um, we appreciate, I appreciate that very much, uh, being able to share uh, some supplies with people. If you have a kit, I hope you'll gather your supplies, your journaling pens or markers, or if you have rubber stamps and ink, um, whatever adhesives you may have, and you'll be able to do some assembly with me tonight. If you don't have a kit, I hope you'll still take, stay with me and watch and see what it is that we're doing um, and, uh, and exploring with these products. I'm gonna make sure my, turn off the volume on my other screen and that way I can, oh, I might be able to see comments. Sometimes I can um, and that will be helpful. Uh, if you have questions or comments, please add them. If you're watching live, say hello, let us know where you're from if you're catching on replay, you can type in replay. It's always fun to know who's, in it, who's, been, who's been a part of the, the event. So again, big thank you to Julia at the Public Library for hosting, and um, it's my pleasure. So we're going to get started. In your kit this month, um, there was actually a, a tea bag. So if you're a tea drinker like me, you can um, have a cup of tea while you're, while you're crafting. Um, uh, and there are four cards in your kit, uh, but they're not all the same four as everybody. Everybody's kit isn't the same this month. So what I have is um, two cards that are the same, and we're going to start by creating those together. Both of these two cards uh, we'll be working on uh, tonight together. And then the other cards, you'll have one of a variety, and I'll explain that a little bit later in the evening, um, some of the kits that I have that I shared out. But these two, we, we all have the same supplies to work with. So we're gonna begin with the just wanted to send some happy thoughts your way, This the blue card. So find in your pack of supplies, the um, I, yours probably has the card still um, unfolded. It would look like this. Has a really pretty envelope with some gold dots and um, this floral paper. So if you take out those supplies, that's what we're going to begin with. And while you're getting that ready, I will tell you a little bit about this stamp set called Happy Thoughts. This was inspired by a friend of mine, Jackie, who is a fellow demonstrator. Um, and she, uh, when, when you sell a million dollars of stamps within Stampin' Up! And, as a demonstrator, then you have the privilege of helping to design a stamp set. So um, my friend Jackie uh, does worked with um, Kathy at the Stampin' Up! Home Office to design this. And I, I really love all of the versatile greeting. So we're gonna use almost all of them tonight um, in the projects. And as a reminder, if you have stamps at home, you can substitute greetings. If you don't have any inks yet in your collection, then you can use marking pens, journaling pens to write a scripty message or a printed message. You could always print something from a, um, a uh, from the computer. You could also cut from magazines. Sometimes people even go through the newspaper on Sunday and, um, and find different greetings or words that they'd like to use. So, uh, so you can do that too. All right, so we'll be using my friend's stamp set called Happy Thoughts. And uh, also we'll be using the Paper Pumpkin stamp set um, from this past month called Berry Comforting. And I'm gonna move, take off the bear from there so you can see the images a little more clearly. It's got a wonderful little happy bear. And then the images, the greetings, get well soon, you are on my mind, and hooray, along with some other floral images. So these are, as you know, Paper Pumpkin is a monthly subscription kit. And what's my favorite thing about it is that it includes the stamps, the ink, and all the consumables you need to match your, um, to complete your project. So we are going to uh, go ahead and begin with this, um, the first card. And so you'll, you'll take out your supplies and we're gonna begin by stamping our um, label. And I'm going to use tonight a tool called the Stamparatus. And my screen is uh, sp 
spotty a little bit. Hopefully the Wi-Fi will stay um, so that we can be successful this night tonight. Thank you for your patience if there's any issues with the technology. Okay, so this tool is called a Stamparatus, and what it, what it does is allow us to line up images um, and re do repeatedly, re stamp with them repeatedly. So if I wanted to make 20 of these cards and I wanted always for that label to be lined up nicely, I could do it over and over and over again. So what I'm gonna do is take this, this uh, punched greeting label and stick it into that, there's a template here. And the template was just because when Stampin' Up! provided those labels, it already had that um, die cut image. You can also do this if you do die cut images with your uh, Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. So now what I'm gonna do is ink up, using my uh, pretty peacock ink, uh, the greeting. And I'll flip it over onto the label, press gently and fully along the image. And there I have just wanted to send some happy thoughts your way. So we'll set that aside until we need it for our next card. But I love the Stamparatus. It allows me, I don't need quite as many clear blocks because that is my clear base to put, mount the stamps. And um, it also allows me to cover any oops that I have. If you first do an impression and it's not a full image, you can repeat the image, the ink right on top of the ink. All right, the rest of this one is simply just assembly. And we're gonna be using lots of different um, adhesives tonight. Now remember, if you don't have stamps in your collection yet, you can still make these cards with your own writing. Um, or if you wanna leave this part blank, go ahead and, if you're not sure yet, go ahead and assemble the other card parts with me and then leave this in the envelope. Um, and then when you're ready, you can decide what you want that to say to, get, to be given to your friend. Okay, so let's go ahead. What we're gonna do is secure the vellum to the, um, the base, the card base here, okay, the card front. And I'm gonna do that with a little bit of seal adhesive. Now, you'll notice on the vellum, there's one side that's more gold. The gold is printed on that side. That's the side I want to be facing up. So I'm gonna put a little bit of adhesive on the back. And I'll get this seal started there. And I really just want it to, uh, to be um, in the middle there. The adhesive won't show because we're gonna be covering it up with the label. All right, now if you're using adhesives that you had in your kit from the library, there are some small glue dots that you can use. You also have the Stampin' Dimensionals in the kit and you'll wanna have those handy too. Now we'll take the uh, yellow and white Baker's Twine and uh, the bow is going to be over here on the right. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of a tail and then I'll wrap the string around two times, okay? Now, some of you love to make bows. You love ribbon and bows. Some of you, it's not your favorite thing. Um, and over the course of several times together, we can learn different tricks to help with bow tying. I like to imagine I'm just tying my shoes so I get my lines, my tails ready and just like I'm tying my shoe. Um, Baker's twine is quite forgiving so you can kind of wiggle the ribbon in the shape after you uh, put it the way you like. You can leave the tails long or you can just trim off. I like to have a sort of finished edge so I'll trim that little bit of piece off. Okay now in your kit, you have either some little uh, sequins that look like little flowers or little round sequins. You'll see on my sample here, I used the round ones. Some of you have round ones. Some of you have these little flower shaped ones, okay? And so you're, you have six of them. Um, I recommend that you use three on the blue card and then reserve three to use on the card with the birds in a little bit. Uh, but it's up to you. You can use the supplies from your library kit however you like. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and now just add three little sequins up to my card. And we've talked before about how often odd numbers are great with, uh, with projects. They help to draw the eyes um, in a triangle kind of fashion. So it moves your eyes along the, the shape. There, there's also a leaf. Now my leaf in my kit tonight is different than the one you have. You have one that's more floral, uh, but I'm gonna use the leaf one tonight and it'll, it'll give us the same effect, okay? So I'm gonna use a glue dot 
My glue dots are a little thicker uh, than the ones that you have, but you can double yours up if you need it to be stronger. And we'll just, we'll just put that down. It's gonna be covered up by this label. All right, so because I stamped that and I like the way it is, I'm gonna go ahead and, ad and adhere to my card. But if you weren't sure, like I said, what you wanted your card to say, you could just leave this part blank and then have it to add to your card um, once you decide if it's gonna be a birthday card or maybe you'll invest in some more stamps and you wanna have um, a specific image. So we'll adhere this to the blue card with our seal adhesive, or you can use Tombow if you have the green glue. You know I talk with great affection of my multi-purpose glue. And that will uh, be secured now onto the blue card base. All right, so it opens this way. All right, and then we'll use dimensionals to pop up. If you want to give me some more comment, comments and know that you're able to still see me, that would be great. I love to know that you're watching, that the technology's working okay. Um, there's always a recording that we post after uh, the Facebook Live. Will, uh, the recording will be posted both here on the Public Library site and also on my um, business Facebook page, Missy's Gladheart Studio. So you can find, find the video there. Uh, because I don't expect you to keep up. <laughs> um, on the night of our video, I try to go through several cards and I am a quick stamper. Um, so don't worry to, about keeping up um, every step of the way. Just try to watch and listen for instruction. You can always go back and watch the recording, pause it and fast forward as you like. Okay, so here's our first card. Just wanted to send some happy thoughts your way. And We've got an envelope with these gold dots lining. It's lovely and it's ready to share with a friend. So that's our first one. I'm gonna set that aside. And next we'll go ahead and begin the, the card that this color is called terracotta tile. It reminds me of colors in Italy. It's, it's beautiful. And um, it's kind of a rusty corally color and this one, we're going. It, the card part has these fun birds, uh, along with some vellum die cuts, some gold, and we have a lot of options on this card how we want to add a greeting. So let's let's take a look at that. Oh, I just put my fingers right into my ink pad, <laughs> but it's not a good day unless there's ink on your fingers. So I've got lots of ink on me now. This pretty peacock ink. I'm using my chamois to clean off my stamps and it also will clean off my skin. If you have trouble cleaning off ink um, after crafting, a hand sanitizer does a great job cleaning it. And also, when you, the next time you wash your hair, the shampoo will really help get that ink off. That's what I used to say when I was a teacher and kids would get messy at school. I'm like, time for you to wash your hair. And that would clean off their hands at home. So, all right, this card with a terracotta base. Where are all my birds? Their pieces are all hiding in here. Oh, it's good to see you on here today. I'm so glad people are watching and enjoying. Jennifer, thank you so much for the lovely card you sent at Christmas time. I loved hearing from you and Hannah. Hope you're having a good start of the new year before everybody's back to campus or back to the virtual learning. Or, um, my son, Billy, is doing the remote learning at, uh, at Durgi, and so 100% remote, um, but uh, good to be back at least into the, the schedule of classes. All right, so now what we're going to do is um, take a look at the pieces that you have, because you, as you know, I've um, put the kits together and made a sample for you to follow, but you, are, as the creator, as the designer, can mix and match these pieces any way that you like. So you can take a look. You've got, I think, at least two strips of the paper here. I put in a couple extra. It's got a white circle. We have a gold leaf, two vellum die cut pieces in different colors, and the sequin still. Remember, if you use three on your other card, you have three for this card, okay? So um, 
I'm going to create mine the way my sample was designed, but you might choose, actually let me could do one um, horizontal. So you've got a, um, a vertical or portrait landscape when it's up and down. And this is a horizontal or what we call a landscape. So this one I'll make as a landscape, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and put my green leaf down first with a little bit of adhesive. And I don't have to worry, actually I'm gonna use the Tombow here. I don't have to worry um, a lot about it showing because you can see that the white circle is gonna cover up a lot of this green vellum piece. The, the, the um, what do you call it? The stem part of it, okay? The first time I realized I wanted to pay attention. Thank you, Elizabeth, terrific. I'm glad you're here tonight and watching. Excellent. Um, I agree, when I watch videos on YouTube or through Pinterest links and things, I enjoy listening and kind of watching and picking up the tricks and then um, going back and watching for any review that I want. Or, or sometimes you'll just take an idea uh, from what I share and then tomorrow take out the supplies and make it any way you like. Mix it up with other supplies you have at home or uh, put your own spin on it. Okay, the next piece is this little circle larger circle actually. Now this is a nice element if you had stamps with large greetings you could stamp a greeting onto the circle but in this case I'm using it as a background for the birds just to help them kind of stand out on that terracotta background and we'll continue to keep to keep building and layering it. So next I'm going to adhere the the blue vellum leaves with just that little bit, a little goes such a long way with the Tombow glue. Um, we affectionately call this green glue sometimes because it's um, green lids. It has a pen tip, which I use most often, and it also has a broad tip. The broad tip I'll show you just for an example in, in it later on, Hope I'll, hopefully I'll remember. But in this case, the pen tip just can give you just a really skinny, skinny line, thinner than angel hair pasta, certainly not a spaghetti line. You want it to be really thin. Okay, so now I'm going to put my birds on this limb here. They're chatting with each other. This could be a happy uh, anniversary card or a um, celebration card, birthday card. And the greeting that we'll use is from the paper pumpkin kit. And it says, you are on my mind. So it's just a nice card for a thinking of you, especially during these COVID days, it's nice to get mail um, other than bills or advertisements and a little love note would be so welcome at this time. So it's interesting seeing them side by side. An advantage, one of the reasons I decided to do this one landscape is I have a greeting that I'll stamp inside it. Okay, so we've got this gold piece and I'm going to give just, again, a little bit, it's hard to see on camera, but just a tiny bit of glue. And it's gonna tuck in here and be secured like that. So for my greeting strip, I have the stamp that says, you are on my mind. But I'm gonna take a little, a short detour, if I can find it, to show you what the stamp looks like um, originally it's a, it's designed to fit into a circle and so the words are actually um let's see what you can see best with some white behind you are on my mind see how the you are on and then my mind is underneath um and but i wanted it to be a straight across image one line across so i cut the photopolymer stamp now not everybody is brave to do that but i have always um experimented felt comfortable experimenting with cutting the stamps. Um, we're, I'll show you another example with the red rubber later tonight, but with the photopolymer, it's, it's easy to, to know that you're in a safe place by the way the photopolymer is raised. And so you can generally, most images with words you can cut apart, not all. But so what I did was I was brave and I cut apart, you are on my mind, and now it's one long strip. So let's find that ink again. The, Pretty Peacock ink. We will stamp, tap, tap, tap on the ink pad, and then stamp onto the uh, basic white paper. Oh, and that one it was a little bit high. 
Usually I wanna get over it a little bit better to line it up. I'm gonna give myself a second chance. I'm gonna flip it over, just like there's two sides to every story. There's two sides to our, our paper. And this paper is thick enough that it allows me to flip it over, give it another try. So this time I'm gonna try a little better to get that um, centered. Oh, still a little high, but you know what? Handmade with love, that's okay. Uh, if I were doing this off camera, I would lean my head way in there so that I'm on top. But that's okay, handmade with love. What I wanna do now is, is trim the edges to be like a banner. So I'm going to cut in first a line to the center, and then I'm going to cut from the, uh, the tail. I'm gonna cut the edge to the center and the edge to the center, and that's gonna create that tail for me. I'll do it again over here. I'm gonna cut a line into the middle, and then from the corner to the middle, and the corner to the middle. Okay, doesn't have to be perfect. Again, handmade with love. You are on my mind. Okay, so something I could do, excuse me, Excuse me. Um, oh, good idea. Julia says that she usually lays things out while watching the live, then goes back later to actually do the gluing. Perfect. It's definitely a great strategy to um, get your design plan made first before you start adhering because the glue will be a more permanent piece, whereas otherwise you can, um, can move the pieces, like a puzzle, move things around until you like them. Thank you for the bless you, thank you. So if you you were on my mind, if this were offensive to you that this was had too much space here, you can take a journaling pen and do a little doodling. You can make a little swirl here. I like, some people are comfortable doing doodling and fiddling. Um, it's kind of sometimes, I don't know if some of you might do um, zen tangling. Zen tangling is, um, is a, in, intentional doodling um, that's zen-like or, or kind of a meditative time and you do repetitive designs. It's a lot of dots and swirls and stuff. Um, so you can kind of fiddle with this if you wanted to fill some of that space. Just for fun, I'm doing it tonight to show you how you don't have to worry. You can be brave. Um, it's just paper and ink. If you were really unhappy with it then, you could start again. And I did give you more than one strip so you'd have a chance to play. But let's say I wanted um, to write a message and I didn't have a stamp here but I wanted to say, um, uh, let's see what might these birds say. If you can type in something that you think would be a great greeting for this card, I'll, I'll set that aside so that we can do it. If you think of a, um, a sentiment that would fit on this strip, if I write it, and then I'll, that way I'll give an example to you of what you can do, how you can still complete your cards, even if you don't have uh, rubber stamps in your collection right now. So I'll wait just to see a little bit if, um, if anybody offers a sentiment, otherwise I'll, I'll share one of my own. Mickey had a great idea. You could also simply trim the bottom of the flag since it wasn't centered and then flag it. So great ideas. What we like to say is there are no mistakes in stamping, only opportunities for layering and embellishing. So it's just paper and ink, friends, have fun with that. But let's put the, the gold sequins on while we're waiting. If anybody has a nice little sentiment that they'd like me to write, and I'll go ahead and put on my, my uh, little sequins here. Okay. And so we have a, a portrait and a landscape version. And I'm just trying to think of a nice little greeting. Miss you is a good one. Yes, it is. Together is better. Oh, let's go with that one because we've got two birds, okay? So we'll do together is better. I love it. Okay. So I'm gonna I, I'm gonna just print and then I might add some little zen tangling or whatever how my my thing go, my um my spacing works. But we'll start off, it'll say together is better. Okay, so I'm gonna have a T capital T and then nice printing here. I'll try to go slowly. When I write too quickly, it's a mess. Together is, and I'll make all the capital letters. Together is better. Wonderful, okay. So now I'm gonna flag it. 
And this time, I think I'll show you, I've got a punch that can do this. So let's, let's use one of my tools. We're gonna slide that strip of paper, cardstock, into the punch. And the punch is gonna make that flag for me. Isn't that fun? This one I think I'll trim just a tiny bit first. So you can either do the flagging with the scissors or you can use a punch. And now that we have together is better. So this I can use dimensionals again and it'll, it'll be alongside here or underneath. Gonna use some dimensionals. You know on my cards, almost every single card has lots and lots of dimensionals. In this case, I um, the, the white layer is already popped up, so I don't want my um, dimensional to make it even higher. So I'm putting it way over at the edge and it'll come off. Now, this is another example of getting your your main design done before you add embellishments. So because my little sequence, I'm gonna to try to move them. Sometimes the glue can't be moved. So what I can do is uh, add my um, Tombow glue. But let's go ahead, together is better, I love it. And then this little guy that came off that I moved, I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of my Tombow glue and then that will be okay. All right, let's see some other Stampin' Right markers, yep. Okay, so we have Together is Better and You Are On My Mind. Now, I wanted um, you to see that when I did it landscape like this, I would have room inside to, um, to put a larger greeting. So the greeting I was going to put in there is a, is a um, is one we're gonna use for the other card too that's kind of like for a thank you card. It says, the little things you do so well and so often make a big difference to so many people. I think I'm gonna hold off and not put it inside because it doesn't go as well with the together is better. But um, one reason for maybe planning your card to be landscape rather than portrait is if you have a large greeting that you wanna fit into your card. Okay, thanks for the inspiration for the greeting, Jennifer. That's wonderful. I'm gonna set that one aside as well. And just remember that you can't go wrong with your own writing or your own doodling, that handmade with love. Whoever receives your cards will be so grateful. Thanks, Mickey. Yes, this is a, uh, this is a marker we no longer carry with Stampin' Up, but it's a, uh, just a fine black marker, a journaling marker. Um, in the next couple cards, I'm gonna be using some of our Stampin' Write markers, which have a journaling tip for writing. So you could do add color to your little Zen drawings. Um, or, and it also has a brush tip, which we'll use to do a, a technique called omitting tonight. All right, so let's go to those cards next. They are, in your kit, you have one of these three cards. It's kind of like a, a, um, a surprise. You get to see which one was in yours. Um, and you'll know they're different colors, so you'll be able to pick out uh, from your supplies the card that has a colorful base and then a laser cut overlay. Aren't these pretty? Now these are from a kit that Stampin' Up! created a few years ago, and it comes with this nice case as well, a plastic case that you can store your cards in. And I do have a few of these available as full kits. So if you love the one you made or you wish you had one of the other one that wasn't in your kit, please reach out to me um, through Facebook, my um, Missy's Gladheart Studio, or you can uh, message me and, um, and I'd be happy to help you get some more of these supplies. The, the masks are really fun to work, the overlays are really fun to work with even as a mask, uh, like a, um, a stencil. Oh, Elizabeth had a good one. Thinking of you, even though we are separated by masks, yes. Very good. <laughs> and we could even make little um, little masks for those birds, right? It's fun to personalize um, a card for a person and also for a time, right? We are at such a time as this. Uh, so those are great ideas. Okay, so let's begin. We're going to, let's do the lemonade one first. I call it the lemonade card because it has lemons and limes and orange slices here. Um, and so if you have the lemonade card, you can pull it out. But even if you have a different card right now, I'm gonna assemble all three, but the tips are the same 
uh, as we go along. So you can get those supplies ready, whichever of these green glitter cards you have. They all have a little bit of the green glitter in them. That's what to, shows that that's the card we're working on next. So we're gonna use some um, Tombow multi-purpose glue and let's make sure I can find it. I have a small sponge waiting for this job. Let's hope I can find it here unless it got moved. I have a big event with my team this weekend. So I've been doing a lot of videoing and um, planning and cutting over the last few days. And so some of my projects get mixed from one project to another. What can I substitute? Let me just think for a moment. Thanks for your patience. Hmm. Talk amongst yourselves, comment. Oh, I found it. Comment amongst yourselves as you're waiting. Here we go. This is a, a Stampin' Sponge that I've cut into a, a wedge. And this is going to help me apply the glue without it being too much glue, okay? So thanks, Elizabeth, not to worry. It's, everybody just take a little breath. Um, but we're going to head, go ahead. I want to make sure the one thing you have to, uh, to the tip I want you to know for this series of cards is that um, there is a way to line it up so that it, um, the overlay goes nicely over on top of the um, printed card. And so this one you'll see has a large circle up in the right corner. That's the, the way it goes so that it covers up and that way it looks like the orange, the lemon, the lime. Now, if I did it a different way, it still looks fine. It actually just is a more abstract image, but I'm going to try to try, sometimes I get it mixed up, but I'm gonna to try to line it up so that it, it goes evenly. Now let me just show you for the blue card because it's really the same, the straight, same information for you. So the, the blue card has these lovely floral designs printed and the um, the one floral part is at the top and then the two at the bottom and you'll see that this long uh, leaf is down in the bottom left and that if that way it lines up where it creates kind of a stained glass effect hopefully you really like these I, I love these cards and they give a huge wow without a lot of steps um, so I hope that you'll enjoy them. Yay, Julia likes that. I thought you might. Isn't it cool? So I'm, uh, the reason I'm spending some time talking about the lining up part is that it, you, I don't want you to be disappointed and have your glue on the wrong side. So for each one, we'll take our time to be sure we're lining it up. So we're making sure that large um, orange slice is up in the upper right, lefts and rights. You know the trick of L for left and then not L is for right. I have a lot of trouble with my lefts and rights, so you'll often see me using that trick. Um, so what I'm gonna do is take my uh, Tombow glue, and I'm just gonna grab a scrap of paper so that my surface stays more clean. I'm gonna um, just make a little puddle of the glue. I don't need a lot. And then I will take my, um, okay, this is the orange, this is the top, so I'm gonna flip it over. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I'm working on the back side. So I dip my glue, my sponge into the glue, and then I'm just going to sponge it over this overlay. And a little goes a long way with the Tombow, remember, you don't have to um, flood it, but it's going to just create enough of a tackiness here that it will be secured. So we line it up over those fruit slices. What do you think? Okay, so there's our orange or lemon or citrus card, we can call it, right, our citrus. Let's go ahead and do the same now for the blue card while we're working with the glue. So I take just a little puddle of that Tombow glue. My sponge is ready. And then I wanna make sure I'm gluing on the back. So I take a look, here's the front, I'm gonna flip it over. And then right along the middle, I can put quite a bit of glue because there's lots of space. And then just what you're doing is creating that tackiness. Now, if you don't have a sponge or you um, are working a glue stick, just take your time because you don't want it to tear. So um, 
what I do if I don't have my sponge handy, and I, but I do have my Tombow glue, I'm just going to very light-handedly, very, very, very light-handedly um, do a few little tiny, tiny lines. Again, thinner than angel hair pasta, not ever spaghetti. Like when we were younger, did you used to do glitter projects in preschool? And it was so much fun and you'd make a big worm full of glue, right? Colored with the glitter. When you're working with this green glue, you want just a tiny bit. Okay, so you can, uh, if you have the sponge, you can go back again and um, just put that light, light application of glue on here. And glitter's a funny thing. Some people really, really love glitter. Some people not so much. So what I liked about these cards is there's a little, there's a hint of glitter, but it's not overwhelming. Um, all right, and then the third one, we'll go ahead and get them so they're all at the same place in, in assembly here, depending on which card you had in your kit. This is the one I'm choosing to do as a landscape tonight. I wanna remember that because I have a special um, greeting for the inside. Um, so, and this one doesn't matter so much the up or down. If you look very closely, there's a tiny bit of kind of brown at the edges of the cut and that's the like burning from the laser cut. There's just a little hint of discoloration there. The other side, you don't see that. It just is true white. And so there isn't really an up, I think for me the up and down is where the brown shows. Um, but you, you don't have, if you have this card, you get a pass tonight. You don't have to really worry about up or down, okay? <laughs> so I'm going to do the same thing with my sponge um, and turn it over and then lightly apply. And I'm just using this little purple paper just to keep it a little, a little bit clear of my main surface. We have a silicone sheet that works really great for this purpose, but I, it was hiding in my studio today, um, so I don't have that to show you. But I'll go ahead and put this down. So now we have all three cards at that first step. Okay, you'll have to let me know if you have a favorite. Um, and maybe you ended up lucky and have your favorite in your pack, um, but otherwise let me know because I have some more to share with you. This one, we're, we're gonna do both of these as landscape cards tonight. But again, based on what your greetings are, you can choose if you want it to be portrait or landscape, okay? So let me, let me think for a second what part we should do next. I think we'll do the stamping part next, okay? So um, whatever card you have, you have a label in the kit. I'm gonna pull those out and hopefully be able to, one of them is a circle, here it is, okay. So I have three now uh, that I'm going to play with. Um, one, I'm gonna pull out that Stamparatus, pull back out that tool, and we're going to stamp the words, thinking of you. This is the image that goes with the, uh, let's see, I'm gonna find my sample so I can show you more easily. Um, hmm. Again, things like to hide, right? Do you have that trouble sometimes on your craft table? Do things sort of hide? Here they are. Oh, they're so pretty. Okay, I don't wanna show you all of them yet because there's sort of a surprise, but this one is the thinking of you one. So we'll work on this next, okay? Um, this stamp is from my that favorite stamp set of mine now from my friend Jackie. It's called Happy Thoughts and it, the greeting is thinking of you. So we'll use our pretty peacock ink pad and the Stamparatus. So what I'm gonna do is place that label inside the little template. And I know that every time, if I keep the stamp on here the way it is, every time I use it, um, it will line up exactly right. Now, I'm not gonna keep it on this stamp forever, right? On the Stamparatus forever because I wanna use the Stamparatus for other projects. And this stamp I'll wanna use in other ways as well. But it's a cling stamp so that it, uh, it easily can, can come on and off the Stamparatus. And I'll, I'll show you that in just a minute. There we are. So there's our label. 
And I want to show you how you, what you do is clean off uh, the ink from the um, stamparatus, from the stamp that's on the stamparatus. And then you can just peel it off. And it's a cling stamp. Sometimes we use photopolymer. Sometimes we use cling. The cling have a very sticky, um, clear adhesive piece on them that's tacky. So you can stick it onto the stamparatus. You can stamp, stick it onto the clear block. Um, repeatedly over and over. But after you use it, it's a good idea to get it cleaned and then put it back into its case. So I'm gonna go ahead, we've used the thinking of you, I'm gonna put it right away into its case tonight. All right, and I can set that aside. Uh, but we're gonna use this one um, on a block in just a minute. Thanks for your patience as I'm moving things around gonna get that one clean as well so I can use it with a different color in a little bit. Juicy, juicy cleaner. Okay, this is just a, a chamois that um, has water. There's no chemical cleaners in it. And so um, you'll notice my hands will get pretty dirty. The chamois will get pretty dirty, but the stamp will then be clean and ready to use with either with different colors or in a, um, uh, a di for a different project. All right, so there's my thinking of you. Let's go ahead then, we'll, we'll, um, we'll come back to do the stamping for the others after we assemble. This one has a um, sweet little banner. Oh, let's make sure I'm on the right one. Yeah, this one has the um, glitter banner that stretches the cross and the label. And then it has a, a piece of the um, coral baker's twine. Now we talked earlier about different ways to make bows. So I wanna demonstrate one way to do a bow um, that's a little different from how we tie, well, some people tie their shoes this way, but um, it's the bunny ear way of making a bow. So you take your string in your hand and it sort of the scent, look how beautiful my fingers are tonight. Um, not a good day unless your hands are inky. <laughs> um, I'm gonna take my, floss so that there's about half in each side here. I'm gonna make one bunny loop and then another bunny ear loop. Okay, can you see that? Then I'm gonna overlap them one and pull it through. So you may have taught your kindergartners how to tie their shoes that way, or someone may have taught you that way, and that will help you create a bow. I'm gonna show you another way tonight that uses a fork, if I can, so I shouldn't have said it till I can find it. Here it is. This is a serving fork, so it's a generous size fork. And um, so this is one way. I'm gonna show you another way. Uh, this is called a fork bow. And um, what you'll do is um, you, you make, um, you wrap it from behind the fork this this twine is about 30 centimeters, so it's about, um, let me pull up here to look at the inches. It's about 12 inches, okay? And this actually, um, we're, this bow is gonna kind of come out a little bit small. We'll have to trim off the edges. Um, but this is a fun trick to experiment. I'll show it to you tonight, and I'll remember over the next few months to do um, different kinds of bows again, because I always get fun questions about how to make Bows. So we're gonna wrap from behind the fork, we're gonna make, we're gonna cross it over. And I sometimes call this a hope ribbon, you know, when there's the circle at the top and the, the ribbons cross, okay? So the one that's on top here is gonna go through the tines, the middle tine of the fork. So they crossed and the one from the top went on over and under then I pull it through the tines and I tie a knot. Don't worry if you don't get it the first time. I'm gonna demonstrate one more time, but it does take a little bit of practice. But this is a pretty small bowl. If you use a, a fork like for your dinner fork, it'll be really tiny. Um, and there's different tools you can use that help you make an even larger bow. But the nice thing about this bow is it won't come untied. It, once it's secured like this, you can't untie the bow. Um, that's also handy if you're making 50 bows for a certain project and you want them all to be the same. The bows will stay um, the same, that distance between the middle and the outside of the 
the tines of the fork. So if you want really consistent bows, this is a great trick. Right, I'll show you one more time with another piece of twine here. Let's see. Okay, so I'll cut another piece. All right, so I wrap it from behind the fork and cross it over. The one that's on top here is going to go under and around. And it is awkward on camera. It's awkward in person too, but it's the kind of thing where once you do it a dozen times, you won't ever forget how to do it. Pull it nice and tightly and then tie the knot. Okay, so I'll try to each month to be able to show you more tips for bows, but that's a fun one if you Again, want a bow that will not come untied and a bow that's always gonna be the consistent size. It's gonna be the same if I make 100 of them, they'll be the same. So we'll go ahead and use um, Tombow glue to adhere the glimmer paper, the green glimmer paper, and this is glittery, so if you have someone in your house is kind of glimmer phobic, this is not the card for them. And then you're going to, we're going to use dimensionals to pop up the label. Has anyone heard of the fork bow before? You need to think of any mnemonic, a mnemonic for it. Yes, make a little song to help us remember. Elizabeth, that's a good idea. Probably people have. I could YouTube it and find out um, the fork bow. Uh, I'm sure people have come up with some great tricks to help with it. So now we've used our dimensionals for the thinking of you. And I'm going to use a glue dot for my little ribbon, my bow accent. And I'll place that on the side here. So these uh, tails are kind of long now. I like them pretty long, but I, want, I don't want them to overlap where the, to go into the envelope. So I'm gonna trim that a little bit. And then you'll notice there's, um, there's something missing, right? There's something glimmering on this card that we haven't put yet on this card. Does anybody know? And hopefully we'll find them in my stash. In your envelope should be just a few of these little guys. They're little gemstones. Um, <laughs> I'm having trouble tonight locating things. I apologize. I thought I had all my parts and pieces handy. But in your kit, there's some really pretty diamonds, gems and you can adhere them. They look just like this. And you can adhere them to your card. They might show up in before the night is over. Let's look next at the um, red, the lovely lipstick, the red, pink and bright pink and coral card next. And this one, um, we're gonna, I'm gonna teach you a cool trick using um, markers to stamp the stamp, to stamp the image. So I wanted to use an image from the stamp set that I've been talking about tonight, the Happy Thoughts one. And this is a happy birthday image. But if we, um, when we stamp this, you'll see it it's doesn't really match the size, right? This is almost square, it's a larger rectangle piece. And it's got a, it would leave a lot of white space, which as you know, doesn't offend me. We can add elements and, and do that. But I wanna teach you a, a cool way using markers um, that I think you'll like um, to, to make this label a little bit different. So this is a technique called omitting. What I'm doing is I'm inking up only part of the stamp. I'm omitting the other part. So I'm just using my marker to ink on the happy. Now if you have any water-based markers, you can do this technique. You don't wanna use alcohol-based markers because they will stain your stamps and they dry too quickly but a water-based stamp or water-based marker will work well. So now there's no ink on the birthday, there's just ink on the happy, okay? So it's kind of faint, but I've got happy and yellow here. I'm gonna do it again without re-inking, so it says happy, happy. Now I'm gonna take my coral ink and I'm going to stamp just, or paint just the word happy again. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna stamp it once, then again, without re-inking. Okay, and then this last time, 
I'm going to ink the full image, the happy and the birthday, this last time. Now what's fun is you can make it, um, happy could be the coral and the birthday could be the pink. You can um, just say happy day if you want it, or if you're trying to spell out a word, you can um, omit the letters that you don't need. So we're gonna finish it up by putting the happy birthday here. All right, so it's just a little bit different way. I could even put another happy under here if I wanted to. So it'd be happy, 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 happy birthday, and then another happy. But I'm gonna leave it at this. It's just a fun way to pull in another color. Um, if you have this card, you know that it has this little yellow flowers. So I wanted to pull in the color of the yellow. And there's each of these cards have some glimmer paper. So let's see if you have the pink card, you have glimmer leaves. Is anybody working along with me on this card? This one has quite a bit going on. Um, you know that you can watch and see some ideas and then make it your own creation later when you put together your supplies. Decide on what greeting you want. Um, we talked too about you could always have a, a favorite Bible verse or a little poem. You can have a photo. It's cool if you have um, pictures. Um, you could use this as a little frame and just a mat for a photo. It doesn't have to be word greetings. But we have some things to layer now, right? We have the, the little flowers. We have our greeting, happy, 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 happy birthday. And then we have all of these green leaves. So I'm gonna go ahead and before I glue anything down, some of these leaves are cutouts. So I wanna pop out those little parts the inside of the leaves. Oh great, Nicole's working on this one, super. And Connie says she likes the jewels even better than the sequins. I love the jewels too. The jewels have a little more height to them or, or, or weight to them even, um, and they're lovely. Sequins are great when you need something to be flat, to mail. If you choose to mail your card with sequins, there's a couple things you can try. Connie, one thing would be um, take a piece of cardstock, just blank paper, and put it over your card when it goes into the envelope. And what that does is give some protection, okay, to what the, to the rhinestone, to the, to the envelope from being um, cut in the, in the process of shipping. So um, that's one way. I have another friend who, when she sends a card that has lots of stuff going on like this, she sends it inside out. So you open it up and there's her words, her writing, but the outside, you, you flip it back over. So that, again, just protects so that the envelope doesn't get um, caught in shipping. Now, sometimes your, your um, card it has a lot of raised elements to it. And when that's true, I recommend putting the extra 20, uh, it's 20 cents extra to have um, uh, an extra, it's called the extra ounce stamp. Sometimes you can buy them, um, they're used for wedding invitations and things, it's a set, about a 75 cent stamp, or you can just buy that extra ounce and put it on with another stamp. I recommend doing that um, if ever you have concerns about it being too thick, because when you have bumps like buttons and sequins, it can cause the machinery to jam, and the post office people certainly don't like that, and it, um, it will also destroy the card, so I don't like it much either. <laughs> but. That was a, a quick aside. Hope that's helpful to you. And I, I agree, Connie, I love the, 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 sequin, the jewels too. So if you're working on this one with me, um, or if you have this to, to assemble later, what you'll wanna do is take out all those little leaves. And if you are a saver, you can save them for something else. They can, if you're patient, they can be adhered um, in little flower shapes, for example, um, which would be beautiful. You can make make a, a floral image of the green glitter. Um, or you can put them into your, your garbage, that's okay. They don't recycle as well as other paper does. So we have, I'm gonna have three on one side and three on the other side of the green. And what I'll do is first pop up my greeting with dimensionals, and then I can tuck all the other stuff inside there. So, um, I'll put some things not too close to the edge because I want the leaves to be able to poke in there. 
And so while I'm working on this, comment for me if you are a tea drinker. Some people love coffee, some love tea, some love lemonade. I'm a big tea drinker. So this was one I loved that um, when you make this, it, it's really, really, really red. It's got such great berries in there that it's a very um, beautiful tea. All right, so then I'm gonna use a little bit of the Tombow glue. And again, a little goes a long way. I can use my sponge technique if I want to, um, or I can, that one seems a little stuck. Let's see if we get it to go. Um, or I can just do the very thin, thinner than angel hair, a little bit of, of, um, of glue. Now, the glimmer paper doesn't like to stick to things as well as regular paper does. So you may find that the, they shift a little bit until they're fully dry. It's, it's one you'd wanna finish and then um, set aside before you put it into the envelope. Okay, coffee, but we'll give tea in a card. Excellent, yes, Linda. I think tea is a wonderful present to receive in the mail in your card. Um, Elizabeth loves coffee, but an evening is for tea. Yes, because of caffeine probably, but also tea has nice calming um, abilities about it. If you like the nice um, chamomile or uh, lemon sometimes. And let's see, I'm gonna add just with my Tombow glue. This one's almost done. We're gonna add our yellow flowers after we get this um, glimmer paper inside. Going with the um, marker technique, I'm going to do uh, use use the marker similarly for the greeting on the inside of this card. Like I said, sometimes they'll shift a little bit until they really dry, so you want to make sure you don't put this card right into the envelope right away. So let's get these little flowers ready, but before I stick them down, I'm going to. Um, sort of put them where I want before I put my take the adhesive sheet off I want to first kind of plan out how I want them to be kind of like one popped up a little more like that so you can do it however you like just be kind of pretty too even all three in one side you could I'm gonna go ahead and add them and not overthink it too much <laughs> yes tea is wonderful on a cold day we've had a lot of cold days I try to get out for a walk every day, but I didn't today. I was busy working on projects and then it was just seemed chilly. But I do try to get walks. Now, again, my, my, my rhinestone bling is missing, but on your card, in your envelope, hopefully you have that sheet of three little stickers so that your card will look similar to this. Here you can see I did happy just one time. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Here I did it that um, ombre look a full strength and then stamping without re-inking. Full strength, stamping without re-inking to get that variation of color. You may also add your bow. Let's see, did we keep one of the bows I made? Here's one. With the fork bow technique or however you like to tie your bow. And you'll add that somewhere on your card. And this one with my flower placement, I mean, I can change it around. You don't have to have the ribbon always in the same orientation. It's up to you where you might want to position it. I think it's going to fall pretty much in the same place for me though. Sometimes we're creatures of habit. All right, so we're going to now do the inside. And like I told you, um, I'm going to share a technique with the marker. So we're going to take this um, stamp that says, today is great because it's all about you the great person you are, the great things that you do. It almost sounds um, Dr. Seuss if you read it like that, but I like it very much. Um, so I'm going to um, stamp the, or color the whole thing first with the coral stamp, sorrel, coral, um, calypso coral marker. So the whole thing, now if I had a stamp pad of this color right here, I could do it, just stamp the whole thing too. So I'm picking the color that's a little bit lighter and I'm stamping the whole, painting the whole 
stamp with it. Okay, then I'm going to take the darker color, this lovely um, lipstick color, and I'm just going to paint those italic words, the words that were um, italicized in the print to kind of stand out. And if you goof up, it's okay. You can just start again, use a wet paper towel or the chamois to clean it off and start it again. Or just add more to make it kind of a watercolor wash look. And I'm gonna give it a breath of fresh air. That just means I'm breathing some of my breath to moisten it. You only need to do that if, it's, if you're using several colors and it's taking you a little bit of time. You wanna make sure the ink is moist enough. All right, so there, now I have, today is great because it's all about you, the great person you are, the great things that you do. All right, so now we have this one. It's missing its rhinestones. We'll find those later, but here's one from earlier with the rhinestones. And now we'll go ahead and complete the lemonade card or the citrus card. This one, remember earlier tonight I told you how I cut my stamp? Um, I did the same in this case because the Happy Thought stamp set has this great thank you. It's a really bold, wonderful font, and it's just a straight line. And in this example, I wanted a circle greeting. So I um, cut it apart, and I'll, after I stamp it and clean it, I'll show you how it's going to be easily, how easily I can fit it back together. There it is for thank you. And let me just clean it off and then I will show you how easy it is for me to um, stamp when I want it to be straight, how easy I can put it together, kind of like a puzzle. So I'm going to peel it off my stamp, off the clear block. And I have another block over here. Oops, oh goodness, we don't want to lose our light. There we are. So now I'm going to take the 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 thank you and I'm just going to line it right back up because when I trimmed the stamp I um, I ended up trimming a little bit underneath the thank and above the Y so that they would be closer together uh, let me show you actually from my sample how originally to see here how the thank you is further apart I wanted to get the stamps a little bit closer so originally it was sort of more like that but then I trimmed the stamp with my paper snips a little bit up below the thank and above the Y. So now when I line it back up, I just have to kind of be careful. I'm gonna put it so that it's it's um, going across. The, the red rubber won't line up exactly, but the words will line up. I hope that makes sense and that I'm not overcomplicating it for you. I just wanted to encourage you, if you have um, stamps that you want to reposition sometimes. You can be brave and do it, and they'll, they'll still do their, their job. All right, friends, now let's finish this one so we can go on to our last project. This one has um, the twine. Instead of tying a bow this time, we're making a little nest. And I think this is the one I need right here. So this is a little bit longer string, and I'm, I'm wrap, wrapping it around my hand so that it's uh, like a little lasso, I guess. It's gonna be a nest. And I'm going to put this label over it. So before I do any gluing, I can see, is this the way I like it? Like, is enough of it showing? Is that please me? Um, or I can adjust it before I do any gluing, okay? So now I'm going to take a little bit of Tombow and try to kind of anchor that down just gently before I put the, um, the label on top. The Tombow is just sort of anchoring it for me until I put the yellow label here with dimensionals. Okay. So this card I love with the citrus colors and I'm a big lemonade fan. Year round I love lemonade, how about you? We've talked about coffee and tea. What are your favorite cold beverages? There's the stripes. We have the green glimmer banner, a little glitter paper. I'll use it here with the Tombow. And then the 
thank you will go on top. So I'm gonna put a dimensional to the north and a dimensional to the south and layer that on top of the green glitter there. What I like about the round greeting for this card is that it, it um, echoes the round shape of the citrus slices and same with the round um, nest of twine. So there's that one. This one we can put inside the greeting that says, the little things you do so well and so often make a big difference to so many people. So I like to, I'm gonna, this is a thank you card, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that nice greeting inside. Sometimes when I make cards, I want to have a lot of space inside to write a note. But sometimes you really just wanna do, you're just sending a quick thinking of you. You didn't need to write an essay. And so when you have a greeting similar to this, or a big happy birthday greeting or something, then you, you can still send out those well wishes, but you don't feel that you need to write um, an essay. So uh, I do enjoy when there are greetings and there's still lots of places to write on here. I've written cards to friends sometimes where I write all the three other sides, um, or you can even insert a piece of paper inside your card when you're sending it. Um, so don't be shy from using um, greetings or writing a verse or something inside for a friend. Connie likes Diet Coke. Yes, that's a favorite. I'm not a big on carbonated beverages anymore, but I love lemonade and, um, and so does our treat sometimes um, when, when we want that bubbly, cold bubbly. Pizza, Coke is always good with pizza, right? All right, so now we're gonna finish up with our uh, last set of cards. If you have, um, you all have in your kit one card that uses the paper pumpkin supplies. So let me show you those three three cards. Uh, there is the, the one with the large bear, the center one, and he's holding some flowers. There's the raccoon card, which um, is I have here completed, um, the get well card. And then there's the koala bears, the hooray birthday card with the koalas holding a cupcake. So what's fun about this um, paper pumpkin kit is it includes um, supplies to make um, nine, let's see, is it nine or 12? Yes, nine, 12 cards, four each of each of the three different designs. And it has that cute bear and the other images in the stamp set. And so they, the bears and the raccoon and the bears and the koala bears can hold um, cupcakes or presents or hearts or flowers and you can mix and match. So let's start with uh, the raccoon one just because I have that sample ready and I won't even need to do all of the gluing for you. The envelopes have this pretty um, striped design in them with that razzleberry ink color and the soft sea foam. Uh, and for this one, if you have the raccoon card, Again, you can decide, would you prefer to have a portrait card or a landscape orientation? You can decide that. You can decide uh, to use your stripes, either vertically, horizontally, or you can flip it and then you have a white surface that you can stamp on or write on or layer all kinds of different ways. So you have choices. Um, I love that this little guy is holding out a heart. It'd be a fun one uh, to create for a Valentine uh, or an everyday love you note, um, but it's also great uh, as it was designed by Stampin' Up to make a get well. So here's that one completed. And this very, very simple construction, I used dimensionals to pop up every single thing on here, uh, but you could use glue dots or a seal or Tombow glue. Okay, so that's card number one with the sweet little raccoon. And let's, the next one we can do is with the big bear. This is if you have the um, soft sea foam card and envelope. And this one, what I liked about these is they all have some gold elements to them. So even though we don't have additional sequins and extra embellishments to add, the cards themselves have that um, gold printed into it. So it just, it kind of steps up, I think, the elegance of the card. Even though they're kind of a whimsical uh, bear image, there's an, ele an elegance about the cards as well, I think. So this one you can adhere the same way as, uh, as we, the, the raccoon. 
what we'll do is we'll use dimensionals to pop up the the base Let's see here here they are usually the things are hiding right in plain sight right okay so I'm going to pop up the this level this layer and again the computer's going in and out so I hope you're able to see me okay and then it will come back into play for you We're using the mini dimensionals tonight remember Stampin' Up also has the standard size dimensional which are a little bit larger but the mini ones are handy especially for small parts and pieces the cute little bear has a slit already cut here uh, already die cut for us so that we can slip in this bouquet of flowers and I've seen some great samples with this where you can substitute something different. Now the tea bag, tea bag is a little bit large for him proportionately, but hey, there's no rules. You're making the card, you're the designer. You can, um, can include a tea bag in this, or you might have something else small like a little verse um, or a, um, another shape, like we have the, the um, hearts, but you could have a, a little candy fit inside here. Um, because this part is already die cut for you. So it's designed for you to be able to tuck something inside. So the tea bag, I think would be really cute on here. If you chose to use the tea bag, a tea bag, you'd want to just consider where you're placing him. So you might have him be sideways. Actually, then he'd be hanging, then you'd cover up his face. I would think we'd want to keep him portrait and, but we might put him up higher on the card instead of down low so that the tea bag wouldn't cover his face. Let's see. We did that if we mounted them up higher that would work okay but i'm going to go ahead and use the flowers that came in the kit i just want to let you know that you don't need to be restricted by the elements you have so here's the flowers and then this one has that round um piece that we had the you are on my mind remember we took we took the you are on my mind and um made it straight now we're going to put it back to be a circle so I'm gonna take my two pieces of photopolymer stamp and put them, you are on my mind, and there'll be one on top of the other. So this one, I didn't do any trimming and it should kind of butt right up against there to be, to be straight for you are on my mind. When you purchase a, stamp, a paper pumpkin kit, it includes the stamps, the consumables, and one of these fun ink spots. And I know you enjoyed getting the, um, ink spots uh, last month and then there was one other month you got one in your kit and good news is that in our our february kits from for the library you'll be receiving another ink spot so that's fun for me to share with you um lee yes putting a piece of tissue for the get well card a little kleenex in there would be precious all right so we're going to use the, the ink spot that came with this kit which is called rich razzleberry and we'll ink it up this is the ink spot and then we'll stamp it onto that circle. So you can see here now how, because I was willing to cut the stamp, I could use it um, as a straight line stamp and also as the circle. Another way to do that, let's say you don't want to cut your stamp, but you want to be able to make this straight. Let me take a minute just to show you, or I think we still have a little bit of time for me to show you another tip. Um, if this way you could use the technique like we did with the markering, so you are on my mind, I can stamp, I can paint with the marker, you are on, right? I'll just do this quickly, so, uh, but I wanna give you a sense of what it looks like. Let's find another piece of paper. Uh, actually, what I can do is put it right, oh, that wouldn't be the right color. I'm gonna go ahead, friends, thanks for your patience. I'm just gonna stamp it right onto the grid paper here. So you can see that I can make it go line up straight. So I'm inking up the you are on and I'll stamp that. Then I'll clean off the stamp. And now I'm going to ink up the my mind. You are on my mind. And I'll stamp the my mind right next to it. So it took a couple extra steps. I had to just um, omit and only color pieces that I wanted, and then use the um, 
clean it in between and then restamp it. Another tip, which I'll try to, I'll make a note so that I can remember it for next time, is using a post-it note. I'm gonna write on my paper here so I remember. Post-it note masking. Let's do some of that next month together. That's one of my favorite techniques where you can isolate a part of the stamp or layer. So post-it note masking we'll do next time, and that's another way you can um, use just part of your stamp, part of your stamp to show. Okay, so you're on my mind. Let's put this little guy together. We'll use some more dimensionals. And it's fun having you here with me tonight live. Thank you. And those who are able to catch the replay, welcome. Especially fun having people here as I'm working together, crafting together on a Thursday evening. Looking forward to when we can be in person again at the Baldwinsville Public Library. But I do love that the technology allows us to gather from all over the world. Uh, there's no boundaries when we're on the... Um, Facebook Live. There, you are on my mind. And the third, so we, now we have the raccoon friend and the bear, and we'll finish up with our koala card. This one, these little guys are so friendly, and they're, it's quick to do these cards. The paper pumpkin um, is, is designed so that you can get right to the crafting part. The pieces are cut and ready for you. A lot of the coloring is done perhaps, um, and it's really just an assembly and your creativity. So this, this, these little guys are gonna hold that cupcake. You'll see how they, there's a slit in here. Again, if I wanted them to hold the tea bag, I could um, cut this. Let's do that to just to show what we would do. Cut this and then one can be on each side of it holding it, all right, like that. That would be kind of fun, wouldn't it? And then they would open it up, they could take the tea out, and there could be the cupcake behind. Let's do that. So I'm, what I have to do is, um, because I wanna use the tea bag tonight, I'm going to um, kind of eyeball, well, let's put the circle down first. We'll use seal to adhere the circle. Okay. And I'm, it's got uh, gold lines that are kind of um, diagonal. It has the razzleberry lines that are either um, vertical or horizontal. I'm gonna place them horizontally here. And then what I'll do, so that I know where that my koalas are in the right place, I'm going to turn them over and put some adhesive right on their bodies. Or should we use dimensionals? What do you think? Yeah, we always love dimensionals, right? Let's put some dimensionals on their bodies. So what's fun for me too, if we were at the library together, my favorite question is always, who would you like to send your card to? Or do you have a plan? Sometimes when we design and make a card, we have that person right in our heart and prayers as we're making it. Other times we have we create cards that we have in our stash. So when we have a need, we can pull it out. Um, or you might say, oh, my best friend's birthday is in August and they love koalas. I'm going to make this and have it for them as a birthday card. But I encourage you not to wait till August. Send it, send it to them early as a, as a friend card. So now we'll put the koalas here. We know that the, the spacing is right because we kept the tea bag in there. But now we'll take the tea bag out because we want them to eat the, to take the tea bag out and drink the tea. So now we just need to put something fun behind. And it looks like the cupcake is gonna just about fit across that space with just a tiny bit of uh, um, white showing. And I don't think that will be offens offensive at all. So I'm gonna put that on with dimensionals. I could also um, cut another piece of something and, um, and fill it in. Um, but I like the fact that they, well, that way only one, we, we could have it so, um, I, I almost think I'd want the greeting to be hidden behind there like a surprise. To do that, I'm gonna have to trim this a little bit. I'm just working with you as we go. If you wanna make this card just as Stampin' Up! designed it, um, then you wouldn't, you wouldn't be doing all this extra cutting. But I'm having fun tonight kind of exploring with it because we've been talking so much about tea. 
So let's see what would happen if the, if um, I had to trim it because I already had put the guys the right distance for the tea bag. But it looks like here we'll just have to trim up a little bit more and then they can hold this banner underneath the tea bag, right? And we can put the cupcake like that because the tea bag will cover that up. And then we can stamp hooray here. So hooray is one of the stamps that comes in the paper pumpkin stamp set the Berry Comforting Set. And we'll put Hooray on this and I'll go ahead and stamp it with that razzle, Rich Razzleberry ink. All right, we'll go ahead and stamp on the banner. And now we, we have sort of, this will be the surprise underneath the tea bag. I'm just gonna wait a moment for it to dry. It will dry quickly, but I wanna make sure it doesn't smudge. And then I can put these, um, the tea bag in there so that the tea bag is there like a little gift. And when they take it out, they're gonna get the surprise that says, hooray, like that. Isn't that fun? So the only thing I have to do to, so that this doesn't move around a lot is put some adhesive in here before we say goodnight. And I will show you again the picture of the original koala bear card if you would like to make it more like the like Stampin' Up! designed, the cupcake fits just perfectly. You don't have to cut those koala bears apart. The cupcake can fit right inside there. But this one is, is extra fun to send to somebody who loves tea. I have a lot of friends who love tea, so I'll have to think of somebody whose birthday is coming up soon because I'm not good at waiting. Usually once I have a, one made, I want to send it out, share it, share it. So I sure thank you for being a part of our event tonight, making these cards to brighten people's days, to um, send them love and sunshine during this dark time of the year. And happy mail is happy all year round. So here we have the three cards with the paper pumpkin kit. We also made tonight the cards that had that green glitter. Okay, these, some of them have the sequin, some of them don't. There we are. And we also began the evening long ago when we made our cards using the birds. Let's see if I can find mine to add to this collection. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I enjoy you being with me and appreciate your patience as we try new things and learn new things together. Here we are. So I hope that this has been a fun night for you to be creative with friends, um, or if you're catching the replay, that you'll find it inspiring. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me at Missy's Glad Heart Studio here on Facebook. Um, I love hearing from you, how you use the cards, what ideas you might have for the coming months. Uh, as I promised, next month we will be, you'll receiving, be receiving an ink spot. It's green, just for as a heads up, as a little sneak preview. Um, and I also have my note that reminds me about the post-it note masking. So I'll be sure to include that in our instruction for next month too. Uh, so again, I love hearing from you. Please let me know in the comments or reaching out to me what, um, what you love most, what you'd like to continue to learn. And, uh, and I, I, I hope you'll be well and safe in the coming month and I'll look forward to seeing you again next month. Thanks you again. Thank you all again so very much for participating. Good night.